How's it going guys? In this video, we're going to talk about skyrocketing electric rates. We're going to talk about what the actual problem is. We're going to quantify the problem. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to walk through your electric bill because every electric bill is a little different. I'm going to explain how your electric bill actually works. And most importantly, we're going to talk about some options that you have available to keep that electrical bill down. So remember to stick around. Please hit that like button. It helps more than you know. And remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment or question down below. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the problem. Well, have you heard anything about your electrical rates drastically increasing in the coming days? Maybe they already have increased, or maybe heading into 2022, they're gonna skyrocket. Have you seen anything on the news about that? If you're like me, the answer is no. Now, regarding the examples here in this video I'm going to use, I'm going to focus here in New England, but if you're outside of New England, stick around because an electric bill is effectively an electric bill. We're gonna talk about how they work, some things to look out for, and probably most importantly, towards the end of the video, we're gonna talk about some different strategies and solutions that you can implement to keep that electrical bill down, despite your electrical company jacking your bill up, most likely without you even being aware of it. Let's talk about some specific examples. Well, if you live in Maine, did you know that central Maine power is gonna be jacking up your electric bill by over 80% here shortly? If you live in New Hampshire, did you know that Eversource and Liberty are gonna be jacking up your electric bill by over 30%? Or even worse, if you have Unitil, like I do, that your electric bill is gonna be going up by over 140%. And if you live in Massachusetts, did you know that National Grid's jacking up your electric bill by over 50%? Now my guess is that the answer to all those questions is I had no idea. Now before we get into my specific situation with Unitil and what I did to lessen the impact but not completely resolve the massive increase in pricing I'm going to experience here shortly, let's walk through your electric bill so you understand the different components when you're looking at your electric bill and then you can start to strategize and figure out potential solutions to your problem. So let's talk about the rate structure. Now there's typically two different rate structures that you're gonna see as a residential customer from your electric utility. Structure number one is a fixed rate. Structure number two is a variable rate. So what is a fixed rate? Well, a fixed rate is pretty simple. It's exactly like it sounds. You're going to pay a fixed rate per kilowatt hour from here until your utility decides to change it, maybe a contract expires, something like that, but you're effectively locked into that rate for some duration, it could be 10 cents a kilowatt hour, you know exactly what you're paying 24 hours a day, 365 days a year from your electric utility. Now rate structure number two, a variable rate. So what is a variable rate? Well, it's exactly like it sounds. It varies and it could vary in a bunch of different ways, but for the purposes of this example, I'll use it on a monthly basis. So for example, if you choose a variable rate, typically, the electrical rate, at least the introductory rate, is going to be lower than a fixed rate. So what does that mean? Well, when somebody in the month of June, for example, is paying maybe 10 cents a kilowatt hour, if you chose the variable rate, you might pay seven or eight cents a kilowatt hour. Now that sounds pretty good when you look at the fixed rate and you figure out, geez, I'm saving a couple of bucks a month here. This is pretty good. So get ready for the root canal because what is going to happen to you is that as time goes on, your variable rate at some point, and I can assure you this is going to happen, it is going to take lift off. And instead of paying maybe seven cents a kilowatt hour or eight cents a kilowatt hour, well, somebody with a fixed rate is paying 10 cents a kilowatt hour and you're going, I'm saving all kinds of bucks. You're going to hit a month where your variable rate jumps from seven or eight cents a kilowatt hour to maybe 25 cents a kilowatt hour. And you're gonna have a heart attack and keel over. It's gonna be a real bad day for you. I cannot stress enough, if you have a variable rate out there, find some way to get out of that and get into a fixed rate, even if it's higher than the variable rate that you're paying right now. The next item to discuss, on-peak versus off-peak electrical rates. Now, full disclosure, I do not have on-peak, off-peak electrical rates, but you can absolutely have these be part of your electric bill. Just make sure you're looking at your electric bill, read your contract, and understand what your setup actually is. So on-peak electrical rates are typically occurring during the normal working day. Now, this is all gonna be spelled out in your contract with your utility, so your on-peak rate during those hours is going to be higher than your off-peak rate. 
So what does off-peak mean? Well, off-peak means when you're using electricity outside of the on-peak times that your electrical utility spelled out. And those rates are typically lower than the on-peak rates. And the whole idea behind the on-peak and off-peak rates are jack up the prices during the on-peak, hopefully people use less electricity, lessen the demand on the electrical grid, and then off-peak, you can kind of use all the electricity you want at two o'clock in the morning. My final example in breaking down an electric bill is, let's take a look at my electric bill. And there's really two sections of my electrical bill. Number one, electrical service. And number two, electrical supplier. Simple way to think about it. Electrical service, I'm stuck with it. Short of me moving or the electrical utility, short of me moving or the electrical utility, Unitil in this case, going out of business, I am stuck with this part of my bill. I cannot change anything. I can't move away from Util. I can't move away from Unitil. I am stuck with Unitil in this part of my bill. Section number two, the electrical supplier. Now this is something that you can control. I can choose my electrical supplier. So what do the two sections actually mean? Well, let's jump back to the electrical service. So what the electrical service section of my bill means is that includes the electric meter I have bolted on the outside of my house and Unitil is gonna service that and, and maintain that if anything goes wrong. It means basically from that meter all the way to the power plant, the infrastructure, the telephone poles, the power cabling, the wiring you see running down your street, a tree falls on the wires, Guess who's coming out 100% of the time to fix that? Unitil or whoever your electrical provider is. It's the infrastructure, if you will. So what does the supplier part of the bill mean? Well, the supplier part of the bill is essentially who's going to supply the electric. So what does the supplier so what does the supplier part of your electric bill mean? Well, you can actually change this. You can move away from Unitil and I'm gonna get into how I exactly did that. So what is the supplier portion of your bill? Well, this is something that you can change. You can move away in my case from Unitil and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. And, and you can choose who your supplier is, essentially who you buy the actual electricity from. Remember, the service part of my bill is all the infrastructure. The supplier part of my bill is the actual electricity that I'm using in my house. Now the purpose of this video is to talk about how you can potentially move away from your electric utility, Unitil in this case, and move to someone else for that supplier portion of your electric bill. Now remember there are a whole bunch of other things you should be looking at to keep that electric bill down. Things like LED bulbs versus incandescent bulbs. You guys can see here in this chart, 60 watt incandescent bulb, or you can choose a nine watt LED bulb. And you can either pay $7 plus per year to run that single incandescent bulb, or you can pay a dollar per year with the LED lighting. It's a no brainer. And for example, there's a couple of programs up here in New England and probably across the country where you can go to these programs and they'll sometimes give you a discount or give you the LED bulbs completely free. And we'll talk about those programs here in a second. So think of your electric bill from a consumption type perspective as well. Are you leaving the lights on 24 by seven by 365? Maybe install a motion sensor like I did in my kitchen. I walk into my kitchen, light comes on. No one moves in the kitchen, 15 minutes later, the lights go out. So I'm not constantly turning things on and off. Another thing I wanna make you guys aware of is you most likely have a program available to you from an energy perspective where They'll provide you with those free LED bulbs or maybe rebates and decreased pricing. Another great thing that these programs actually do, for example, Mass Saves here, they'll actually come out and audit your entire home. They'll walk through it and do an energy audit. They're looking at insulation. Do you have incandescent bulbs across the house? You know, do you have the lights on 24 by seven? They'll put together a report. They'll actually help you build out projects as well and subsidize some of those projects which is pretty neat because you can save a lot of money and make your house a lot more efficient. So again, think of your electric bill, not only from just the utility and I have to run screaming from them like the plague, but think of it from a consumption perspective and take advantage of those programs like Mass Saves. And finally, let's talk about my specific situation with Unitil, the massive increase that I'm gonna see in my electric bill here shortly, 
and what I did to alleviate but not completely fix that problem. But I am going to save a significant amount of money. You guys will see that. Let's walk through this. So the first thing I did is I panicked. I freaked out. My hair's on fire. What do I do? Oh my God, my electric rate is jumping through the roof. And this is what it looks like, guys. So this was conveniently tucked in my electric bill, kind of buried off to the side. You can't really see it. Who's really paying attention? And then when I did see it and paid attention, my jaw dropped. And what you guys can see here in this little snippet here that was tucked into my electric bill, and what you guys can see in the screenshot is I am going to be moving from seven cents per kilowatt hour to 17 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Now that's only a dime, right? When's the last time you cared about a dime worth of anything? You got a dime more of French fries at McDonald's. You paid a dime more for gasoline. You paid a dime more for the house you bought. You paid a dime more for groceries. Who cares? Well, you should care because you need to do the math and understand your electric bill. And when you do your math and understand your electric bill, you're gonna be horrified. And this is why I was horrified here. Let's walk through it. So from a percentage type perspective, seven cents to 17 and a half cents is over a 140% increase in my electric bill. Now, when is the last time you paid 140% more for French fries, for the gasoline, for your groceries, and you walked out whistling Dixie? You probably never have, right? Anytime you pay 140% more for something, you should be pretty upset and you should start really weighing your options and understanding your situation. So that's exactly what I did. So in my case, what I did here is I went to the Public Utilities Commission of New Hampshire because that's where I live and I started exploring my options. And I very quickly realized I cannot change the electrical service portion of my electric bill. Bad news. Good news is, is that I could potentially change my electrical supplier portion of my electric bill. And that's really important because the part of my electric bill that is going up astronomically here with Unitil is the electrical supplier portion of my electrical bill. So the part that's going nuts, I can try to do something to fix it. So on the public utilities website, I went through the list of potential suppliers and I went to their websites, made a bunch of phone calls, and I found a couple of suppliers with variable rates. And like I said, Stay away from these like the plague. Don't do it. You're gonna get burnt badly. So I whittled down the list of suppliers who have fixed rates. And what I came up with is this. I found a company called Consolidated Communications Energy Rewards. Now they offer four different fixed rates that are lower than Unitil's new 17 and a half cent electric rate. They're right around 11 to 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And depending on the length of the term, the longer the term, the lower the electric rate, the shorter the term, the higher the electric rate by only about a penny. So they're not astronomically different with consolidated communications. So the option I went with is the energy rewards 24 month fixed wind contract. Again, 24 months long, 11.39 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you're into this kind of thing, all of the power I'm gonna be buying comes from wind farms. But for me, the driving factor was the dollars and cents. So how much am I going to save on the supplier portion of my electric bill and save overall on my entire electric bill by going with consolidated communications rather than Unitil? One more very important thing I wanted to mention is if you're going to do this, read through the contract you're about to sign with a fine tooth comb magnifying glass, whatever you want to say, go through it in detail. One of the real important things to me is I didn't see any glaring problems in the contract. So I felt really good about this. Number two, look at the cancellation policy. You know, can you get out of this contract? And in the case of consolidated communications, there's a hundred dollar cancellation fee, which is fantastic when compared to a lot of the other suppliers. Some of them it's $50 or a hundred dollars per month you have remaining in your contract. With consolidated communications, you pay a hundred bucks, you move on. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if for some reason, and I don't think this is going to happen, Unitil's electric price was to drop from 17 and a half cents and they said, hey, come back kid, you're a great guy, we're gonna go back to seven cents a kilowatt hour. I could pay the hundred bucks, get out of my contract with Consolidated Communications, move back to Unitil and I have that flexibility. So I thought that was a really good little out for me or a safety net if you will. So let's get into the math. How am I gonna save money going with Consolidated rather than Unitil? Well, in the example of my electric bill here, you guys can see that I used 785 kilowatt hours. 
So how am I going to save money by moving from Unitil to Consolidated Communications? Well, in this real world example, I used 785 kilowatt hours, okay? Paying 17 and a half cents. That equates to my supplier portion of my electric bill being $137.51. Now, what if I use that same 785 kilowatt hours in this example, but I am with Consolidated Communications at 11.39 cents per kilowatt hour? In that situation, the supplier portion of my electric bill with Consolidated Communications is $89.41. So what does that mean at the end of the day? Well, you take the Unitil cost minus the Consolidated Communications cost, and I am going to be saving $48.10 per month or $577 per year by simply changing my electrical supplier from Unitil to Consolidated Communications. That's almost $600 a year that I'm gonna stick in my pocket by basically doing a little bit of research online, making an educated decision, doing the math and swapping my supplier from one to another. So that's how I did it guys. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like, and certainly leave a comment or question down below. I'd love to hear if you guys are facing the same problem and what you did to fix it. I think we can all learn from each other, but try to keep those costs down and keep some dollars in your pocket. Thanks for watching, guys.